B-B-O-T Hi everybody, uh, my name is Tracy Swedlow and this is Television Nation. This is a show that we do through TV of Tomorrow show, the conferences, and uh, just connecting the entire TV industry uh, around the world as a sort of TV nation. And I'm very, very thrilled to have somebody I have never met before uh, previous to this, and uh, I'm excited to hear about his service called True Royalty TV. Great content, you know we're all going to be interested in that. Uh, so welcome to the show, Gregor Angus, who is the CEO of True Royalty. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for having me. It's, I'm always happy to tell the world about True Royalty. Uh, this is the uh, the brand. This is what the show, um, you know, the name of the show. And uh, we'll uh, talk more about that another time. So tell me a little bit uh, about what True Royalty covers. And also, we want to find out a little bit about yourself. I know you have a lot of marketing and communications in your background and TV and starting the, the parent company that runs True Royalty. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your, your, what do you do or, you know, where, you're, where you come from? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm a marketer um, by trade and a, a great career in marketing, um, all sorts of different um, practices in marketing. I ran agencies ultimately. Uh, that's what brought me to London. And off the back of that, I, uh, through the whole, really the digital revolution, I got into uh, digital media and ultimately digital television. I advised uh, a company in the Nordics about uh, commercializing their streaming technology. And after that stint, a lot of the people in London really saw the inevitable transformation and, and shift to, to, I guess, what John Hendricks calls the third age of television. Mm -hmm. and, and how could they partake in that? Um, a lot of them were obviously people with content ideas or content owners, some independent uh, um, TV producers that were basically um, lo losing a big part of the margin to broadcasters and wanted to, to join the digital age. One discussion I had in particular was with, uh, who is now my one of my two business partners, Nick Bullen. And he has a, um, a great independent TV production company, and he wanted to, to see how they could go straight to um, the consumer. And um, very quickly, we saw that there was not just the ability to go straight to the consumer, but a, a, a proposition that could really hold water. And that was um, the popularity, the surge in popularity around the British royals um, that was really surging at the same time as streaming was surging. So. It's really the, the, those two things together that became the business opportunity. And um, the question that we're probably most frequently asked is, how come there's never been a TV channel dedicated to royalty? And it's a good question because the popularity is, uh, is certainly there. You know, I, I wonder, because the, um, these, the younger royalty, the, the younger royals are more uh, media savvy than ever before, if you think they'll ever produce content of their own, or are they always going to remain remote? And the reason I ask that is because I learned from watching The Crown, and I didn't know before <laughs> The Crown, you know, it's just good entertainment, right? But that um, it was a revolution, right, when they televised the coronation. Yeah. yeah. Correct? Well, so I mean, TV is, a, is an important sort of aspect of, of how the royalty changes itself, views itself, communicates. Um, of course, the queen does her... her uh, her speech every year, but what do you think about royals um, using television? And I, I mean, but I want to hear about the channel itself, which is about them. It, yeah, well, I would say first of all, on the royals and the and the next generation, they've always mastered the media. The royals have always understood the latest form of technology and media. They've embraced it because really, um, you know, it's it's a beautiful relationship. The royal family, as much as they don't want to be um, overexposed by the media. They need the media. Um, brands need the media. It's a, it's, we're talking about the fourth biggest brand in the world, uh, the British royal family. And how do you become known and how do you become uh, so endeared by so many people around the world and have so much influence? Well, it's really only through the media. 
And today that happens to be Instagram with the Sussexes and the Cambridges and Buckingham Palace. But before that, there were other channels. So are they embracing it more? Are they harnessing it more than ever before? No, probably not. They're just using the current tools. And, and who knows what the future holds? One of our ambitions would be that they would actually look upon our channels, potentially a way to get uh, through one immediate, efficient channel, get the message out. If they wanted to give a speech that reached the world tomorrow and, and start in one place, they could come to us for that. And it be, could be something that we provided to the world for free. That's not what we're doing right now at all. We're, you know, we're providing um, a compilation and curation of all the amazing royal content, both British and any other monarchy around the world. As, as I say, it, it's above all amazing stories about amazing people. And then secondly, that happen to be royals. It could be a story about the Romanovs. It could be a story about the Thai royal family, Japanese emperors. More often than not, it's a story involving the British royals because they are just so famous and so interesting and the demand is, is there. And there's been so much content um, produced around the British royal family that, uh, as I like to call them, of our various monarchies on our service, they're the premier league. They're the absolute um, go-to royal family that people want to most spend their time <laughs> involved royal. in watching. <laughs> Team Royal, <laughs> like playing, playing a sport or something, playing, playing yeah. football. Uh, so tell me a little bit about um, what your reach is, uh, who your target subscribers are. Uh, what Can you talk about your subscriber numbers? I mean, tell me, uh, yeah. little, give, me the, give me the numbers a little bit. Please. Sure. Our, I mean, the working backwards, our, our five-year plan gets us somewhere between 750 and a million paying subscribers. Um, the key to that is obviously great content um, that pulls people in and keeps them. Great marketing and and uh, massively important is distribution. So you cannot just have something that people might want. You have something you have to have something that people might want and have access to. So uh, alongside um, our focus on the content has been our focus on getting distribution, principally in the U.S. in place. And uh, we, we know through various studies that uh, when, we, when we first wrote the business plan, there were about 12.8 million uh, Americans that were streaming content and had a stated interest in the British royal family. That number has already grown to 25 million, given the growth um, of the two, uh, of the interest in British royals and of uh, the adoption of subscription streaming content. So how do we... How do we get into as many places as possible that those 25 million might want to access us. Uh, there's really, it's a two pronged approach. It could be TV platforms where people like to watch TV, both cord cutters and traditional pay TV types. So we look to be distributed through all the main pay TV providers. We're in a relationship now with Comcast, Cox and Dish. Uh, and then equally over on the cord. Sling specifically or Dish in general? Well, both. We, we, we will be live with Dish. We, we launched first with uh, Dish Networks on their Sling platform, and then we will roll out to, uh, to their Dish satellite platform. Then on the side, more of the OTT aggregators, perhaps more the, the offerings like Sling to the, the cord cutters, um, we're making our sales available too, both through apps and, and looking to be part of, uh, you know, one day part of the premium um, Roku subscription channels, potentially one day Amazon channels. So, so that's sort of one side of the equation. Where do people like to watch their TV or video? The other side of the equation is where do they like to consume royal content? And right now, uh, great fortune to us, is, is um, royal fans are already organized. They've been organized through social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, the number of accounts, quality fan accounts, whether it's around um, the Cambridges, whether it's around the Grimaldis, whether it's the Queen, is extraordinary. So tapping into the fact that we already have fan bases that are focused and dedicated and can be found in one place. So social media, but equally traditional publisher media. So you look at a, you look at a, a publisher like Hello or Ola, you look at um, people, people.com, you look at the Daily Mail group, you look at um, 
American Media International, uh, and so forth. Again, um, they all have Royal Condé Nast. Almost every one of their titles has a slash royal section. This is where people go. We know people are going to certain places to get royal content. So if we're there, if we're in partnership, not just with the TV distribution companies, but equally with the publishers that want to provide the best of what's royal, our premium documentaries find a nice home in partnership with the likes of Condé Nast, a Vanity Fair, for example. Well, and the and the uh, I want to talk about uh, this issue, which is a uh, new content versus uh, never heard of it. <laughs> uh, so you know, I mean, normally people associate, I think, royalty uh, with their appearances in public, right? Uh, that's all they get to see, uh, or the, or the soap opera behind you know what's going on in their lives, and so uh, I mean in. And, and with now that we have all these challenges about producing new content, what are you going to be able to do? Are you going to interview Prince Charles in his home while he's got kind of coronavirus or talking to Prince Albert? I mean, I'm making light of a very serious situation and I shouldn't. We hope right. they, they recover. But the, the key thing is that the, um, they're locked in, I'm assuming, or maybe maybe they're going out to greet people. I don't know. But um, how are you going to produce original content? Are you going to use... Um, uh, legacy content? Are you going to make your content potentially interactive? Are, is there a way to gamify it a little bit? I don't know. I don't know if we'll uh, gamify, but it's, it's, yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of the things you've said. You know, a lot of our, a lot of our originals, a lot of our, our licensed content pulls on archive content, pulls on an event that's been otherwise filmed. Could be a wedding, could be a speech, could be a coronation, could be um, Trooping the Color. Um, so it pulls on those events and then we, we add film to either expert commentary and interview for lucky access interview for lucky enough to get it. Um, I'm, I'm doing an interview right now with you, a reasonably good quality. We could be doing the same thing with Charles theoretically. Right. And the technologies are going fast. We've even been approached in the last weeks with an upgrade of one particular technology that people like you and I use every day that sort of have a pro version where we could actually produce our bi-weekly talk show um, using this technology with all the guests sitting around seemingly in the same room, but actually having a conversation that's enabled by a live streaming technology. So um, these events won't get in our way. Having said that, uh, we've obviously have an opportunity with a lot of people um, have been afforded more time to perhaps go deeper into our service, spend a little more time with it, go more into the archive. And there's actually been a demand for more content. So as a general rule of thumb, we'll refresh our library. We're not looking to stockpile. The name of the game for us isn't to get to 20,000 hours. The name of the game for us is every month for people to have new, fresh content to watch, the people that love this stuff, as they would subscribing to a quality magazine. So a five-hour refresh rate that we use as a rule of thumb a minimum right now we're refreshing more at a rate of about 20 hours uh, because people have time to dig in. Um, today, actually, we, we announced that we have um, a series called the Royal Tour, uh, which is an amazing four part series of uh, the royals on tour around the world in the 40s and 50s, in the 60s and 70s, in the 80s and 90s, and then going forward. So every, everything from the Queen's tour when she first got married to uh, more recently, Kate and William. It's a fantastic, and 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 it's there's a fair chance that our core viewers wouldn't necessarily have the time to get to that. They do uh, these days, and so for the foreseeable future, as long as we're um, um, spending a lot of time at home, we will be providing more content than they, we typically would otherwise. And we're not filming that content. We're drawing on lists that we've already made of the most desirable premium. Uh, content, the license that we've already identified, but that we're sort of dripping into the service on an as-needed basis. Now we're we're accelerating that a little bit. Okay, so your your basically your your production team is sort of ramping up their ability to get out that archived content in uh, interesting new. Yeah, ways. it's our acquisition team. I would say more. It's it's a little more a curation job right now. We're we're creating strands right now. Um, we're putting together strands that are educational. You know, kids maybe that wouldn't have also, or teachers had the time or thought of going to true royalty. You can actually have a, a crash course on British royalty by watching 
five or six documentaries and then you can go deeper learning about the queen and about the the 20th century by watching what about making it educational like you know with a with a quiz or a test or you know somehow working with schools i mean um, we're working with that in social so we're looking at creating you know little quizzes as you say or 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 things like that to engage people but you're right in terms of the content itself we could go a step further and make it a little more interactive and and um and engage schools and teachers. We could have courses about some of the specific topics or documentaries themselves. You know, how the Royals handled World War, World War II and all the decisions they had to make and things like that. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, but speaking of modern times, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, why wouldn't Harry and Meghan want to, you know, step in? They need some visibility or isn't that what they want, even though they don't want to actually go out and do anything? Or maybe they're not royal anymore, so you're not talking to them? Um, that's, that's more of a gossipy question. What What's the what's the scoop on uh, uh, interacting with them? It's I mean, it's so highly reported. I, I can't pretend to know much more than, than you would know if you're following them. They're probably holed up in a house in Canada, not able to travel and spending some quality time as a family but they're also you know they're they're in high demand they're very clever and i'm, I'm sure they're making plans and i'm sure they're going to you know they're going to come out using um their brand uh for good um the moment that they're ready on sort of more on their terms to have the cameras on and, and the media cover them uh the lights will go on and they'll be there and, and they'll be getting their message out whatever message that is and and i'm, I'm pretty sure that their intention is very much for her, for that to be for the good of the people in one way or another. It could be health related, could be peace related, could be um, environment. I think, I, I think that she announced today that she's going to do a voiceover for an elephant documentary for Disney. I think I did see that. I did see. That. Uh, okay, so here's my that's my little report for you. Um, Thank okay. you. Uh, so I'm kind of curious in the uh, your production team or your acquisition team is ramping up. You're developing new content based on your on your archive. Um, a, are you seeing uh, more views? Are you generating um, a, a larger percentage of views? And also, are you worried about churn? There are so many other, you know, there are so many other services out there who are doing D to C yeah. and aggregated video platforms, of course, like Netflix. Are you worried that uh, you're because you're not in the top tier of like Prime, Amazon Prime and Netflix and Hulu, right? And maybe I don't know what the top three are in the UK. You tell me. But uh, how do you market to your subscribers? How do you market and find new subscribers? That's my next uh, slide here. Like, what are your goals and how are you finding and targeting new subscribers to sure. keep that, um, you know, that channel open? Well, I alluded to it a little bit before. Is there there is an underserved need or desire for royal content? It is a guilty pleasure. There's an absolute, you know, before the Kardashians came along, that there was there was an underserved need for whatever that is, right? And that seems to um, have created quite American a, royalty, quite an amazing business. There has always been, um, this is the most amazing storyline and it's been going on not for, you know, not for decades. It's been going on for centuries. It's been going on since Henry VIII was chopping off heads and doing all sorts of wild things. And the story, I promise you, and my business partner will tell you, will continue to unfold. It's unfolding as we speak. You're asking me about um, how Charles might feel today at home. You're asking me about what Megan's up to. This is, this is a story that continues to tell itself nonstop. We just have to be there to cover it and to get it to people in a responsible premium way, the way they want to consume it. We need to be in the places um, that they want to consume it. Now, other platforms like Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, they, 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 they have a different role. They even do have a bit of royal content there, but they have a bit of everything. You, you know, they have professional tennis on Amazon now. So it cuts quite a quite across the piece. And our view and the view of others is very much that within this new world of television, like the past, the winners will be uh, the most powerful um, aggregators and general interest providers on one hand. And then on the other hand, people that really focus on a very specific passion um you know just just like 
pretty much any sport, you know, there, there can be a television channel for cycling, right? Professional cycling, I think it's Discovery. They have a, a streaming service dedicated to that. It is going to be a phenomenal business, right? I have my, one of my uh, collaborators with all our conferences is obsessed with the uh, Tour de France and other, you know, cycling things. So she would never cut the cycling channel. That would, that would be like the last thing she'd do. And that's one race a year, right? And that's justification for probably someone. I, I have tennis TV. I have AT, ATP. And I want to know that I can watch a tennis match if it's going on, whether it's going on in Shanghai or New York or wherever. I want to know that if Djokovic is playing Nadal or Federer, that I can flick it on and watch when I want to watch. I pay for that. I pay for it annually. That's a choice I've made. People have exactly the same relationship. The NFL goes on in the living room. Father and son gathered around and someone else in that household goes off into the corner with her iPad and she checks in on the Royals and watches a documentary about Princess Diana or about Kate or, or Megan. And it is a deep, deep, deep passion. And over here in the passion niches, you do not, we do not need 150 million subscribers. We'd be over the moon with a million, which is very much within a line of sight in our business plan. And it will be an if we get to that level, it'll be a phenomenal business. Uh, when do you think you'll get to that? Like, what's your projection? In five years. And it'll be <laughs> predominantly in the U.S. alone before rolling out to Asia and many of the other countries that are enamored with royalty. I didn't actually um, discuss your pricing, which I wanted to bring up. Uh, super, Is that okay? Shall we um, sure. discuss that briefly? So. Uh, on your site, I think, where'd it go? There's your pricing plan. Can you see that? Ah, yes. Those are pre-sale. Um, There's a sale going on? Okay. So tell me a little bit about um, this just quickly so people know what they can get. Yeah, actually, the, the prices are going to be you have a three months price under six months. It's We're in the process of uh, putting in place our 50% deal, 50% uh, off. So for the period of time we're in now where people have more time to enjoy the service. Uh, we're availing it at three months, six months, or 12 months for 50% off. Okay. So what, right. so you using the annual plan that won't, that'll be 24, uh, 99. Okay. So how are you marketing that just through social media or through I mean, things like this? But, yeah. uh, is there a big push to market that? Because that's well, a, a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. It's a very good deal. So there's, there, as you know, in, in this sector, a lot of people go month to month. They like the five ninety nine. That's how our distribution partners serve up our, our products. So Sling, Cox, and Comcast, it's, uh, it's five ninety nine. Um, in the direct service, which we promote through our marketing partnerships with publishers or through Facebook and Instagram <coughs> or or other um, other distribution uh, deals we have that uh, we're, we have a little more flexibility to provide it uh, different plans at different prices. And those are the, the discounts we're making and we're promo promoting those, as I say, uh, through digital media. So what can you um, tell us about, uh, you know, what's what's happening next in terms of uh, the latest content that's coming out. Are you going to do any premieres? Is there any, any new piece of content you want to promote at this time? Something you're excited about? Yeah, we're quite excited about, um, uh, there's two sort of Harry and, and um, Megan exit, if you will. There I call it, makes it. Exit, <laughs> exit. Excuse me, that we've secured. Um, one of which has never been seen anywhere in the world and the other one which has only ever been seen in the UK. And uh, there's all, one of them is already on the service. It's called uh, Harry and Meghan, What's Next? Um, so that, that if you want to see that, that can only be seen on True Royalty. And um, it was made available this past weekend. And there's an additional one coming up quite soon along the same theme um, of this quote unquote crisis. Uh, that, that happened recently, a whole sort of examination and interrogation with some really interesting interviews um, that reveal a lot of um, what was really going on and a, perhaps a deeper understanding of the dynamics and, and everything that was perceived to be going on and things that actually are going on. It was so confusing to anybody who was like paying even slight attention. Uh, so it'd be interesting to get that kind of insight. Uh, I, I think you're Canadian, aren't you? 
Oh, Canadian. Yeah. You're Canadian, right? I can hear the I hear the little bit of Scottish, you know, in your accent. That's that Canadians have. Uh, be kind of interesting to see Canadian responses to Harry and Meghan now there. But I, as a as a mini documentary, I'd be kind of curious. Yeah. Uh, is there any other type of content that you think um, you want to go after? Um, is there anything happening around the world uh, that you would be like an ideal? Or you know that would be a, a get a real get. The real get is any any access with with any royal family, or any true story that's been uncovered, any archive that's been found or secured. For us, is gold. You know, someone comes to us, oh, we found the lost home movies from uh, the Grimaldis. You know, from twenty years ago. It'd be amazing. And um, so it, it's it's where there's a real, um, authentic, genuine story that needs to be told, we're drawn to it. And it, as I say, it's, you know, to, to make clear what the, the intent was and what the service is, we obviously started with where there was the greatest demand and the most available quality content, the British Royals. But over time, you know, we'll take the same approach as uh, uh, with the, the Asian monarchies. We'll take the same approach with Danish or Swedish or a Norwegian, Spanish monarchies. Uh, we look to have partners in those countries, uh, content partners, people that are, are close to, to what's there and what's available and what the best stories are. We look to have them available across languages. <clears throat> we look to cover the past and the present. Um, we are, have spoken about things such as um, such as virtual reality tours of palaces, for example, palaces that you know, some folk might not be able to get to, and it's always been their dream uh, to go see a certain palace, and why not have a royal do a hosted tour of that said palace and, and have it set on our site is the only place you can go if you can't get to the place itself. So our ambition uh, is not just um, subscriber-based. Our, our ambition is a qualitative one, too, and really to be the de facto brand focused on uh, true royalty. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how you develop and innovate. Uh, it's uh, obviously a, an interesting topic for a lot of us. It is a guilty pleasure mm. for me, uh, even though, you know, I when I went to school in England, I had the difficulty, you know, understanding this idea of being a subject because as an American, you want to rebel against that, that you're a citizen. But, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, Anyway, well, thank you very, very much, Gregor. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a great sort of uh, inside view into this new. When, when were you founded again? What year? We were founded uh, two years ago. Two years ago. So you're a new D to C, right? Service. So uh, we we welcome any more um, contact in the future as you innovate in this environment, in this COVID environment. Thank Thanks. you so much for uh, visiting with us. Thank you for your interest. I appreciate it. This is Tracy Swedlow from Television Nation, and we'll be putting out more shows very soon. Go to tvotshow.com to get new episodes, and you can also go and find under our speaker section, uh, and maybe we'll make it easier to access, but we have podcasts, radio podcasts, audio interviews, going back 12, 13 years. Thanks again. Thank you.